Hi, I'm Larry Levin, and welcome to STL Nonprofit News and our new feature, What Do You Know? STL Nonprofit News offers newsletters, a website, and social media providing those in St. Louis with insights and information about our own nonprofit community and professional trends across the nation. And this feature, What Do You Know?, offers an article about an important topic, followed by an interview with the author. Today's guest in this month's author is Susan Ryan, a founder and CEO of both SC Ryan Consulting, a strategic communications, marketing, and human resources professional group, and Vera Carthy Group that helps clients reach their potential by building organizational capacity in areas of leadership, organizational excellence, and communications. Susan, welcome. Thank you, Larry. I'm so happy to be with you today. And it's great for me, too, because I've known Susan for a very long time. We have. We have. So for more than 30 years, Susan has been partnering with leaders utilizing her influence for strategic thinking, problem-solving skills, and communication savvy to help advance the objectives of those organizations, both in St. Louis and nationally. Yeah. And this month, Susan wrote a piece for us about communication crisis planning and response, which you can find on stlnonprofitnews.org. Susan, let's start with the article. Your first item is to identify the crisis, which on the surface sounds very simple. Right. But really, while one may see the public manifestation of the problem, they may not know where the problem came from or, or what caused it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. It is really important to understand. So whether you get a call from a media outlet or whether you hear that somebody has found out about something that happened in your organization that you would hope to keep private, or if another organization is accusing you of doing something, um, it's important to understand what is it. So what's going on? What are you being accused of? Who's doing it? So it's important to know, is it coming from a competitor? Is it coming from an angry client? Does it have um, some truth to it? So it's important to ask those questions. And what is it? Are they accusing you of financial malfeasance? Are they accusing you of mistreating somebody? Are they accusing you of a policy that has gone bad? It's really important to sort of really take away any emotion that you might be feeling at the time because these are very emotional um, issues when somebody is attacking you or you're feeling like you're under crisis. And in identify terms that analysis, In terms of doing that analysis, does it matter kind of which sector you're in, for instance, you know, I know you do a lot of work with public agencies and prosecutors and the like, and, you know, but you also consult with corporations and, right. and the like. Does it matter? Are the rules pretty much the same no matter what? They really are. The rules are pretty much the same no matter what, is that, um, you know, certainly there's a, there can be a lot at stake. One of the reasons I think the first thing you should do is identify a crisis is because things can always feel worse than they really are. Or you can minimize something that's coming up and think that you're going to be able to get a hold of it. I mean, unfortunately, the 2006, what was it now, 14, 16, um, you know, shooting here in Ferguson, yeah. um, that, you know, when that first happened, there had been officer involved shootings all the time. Nobody expected that to become a worldwide issue. And um, so sometimes you can you can make a bigger deal of a crisis. Sometimes you can minimize it. And and the outcomes oftentimes, unless you do something about it, can get away from you. Sure. And depending on the size and type of organization, though, the team that deals with it may be a little bit different. So let, let's talk about that. Like with a nonprofit, we could have a couple of different scenarios just to there are lots. But let's just right. take two. One is a midsize or larger nonprofit that may have a dedicated communication staff or a smaller one who maybe just has an executive director, but not that dedicated staff. Who actually do you bring together for this? And should, and in a nonprofit setting, should the board or at least the chair of the board uh, be somebody who's getting involved in this as well? Yeah, I think, I think once you identify what the problem is, then you have to make that decision on whether or not you raise it to the board. And if it has the opportunity of becoming public, you should always raise it to the level of the board. If it's just yeah. sort of something where you're thinking, gosh, that was bad news, I'll raise it at the next board meeting. But I'm a firm believer you don't allow your upper management, your board's members to be caught by surprise and read something 
in the media that, that they should know from you. Right, and, for, uh, and to give you the opportunity for shameless self-promotion and or uh, promotion for PR folks in general, how does a nonprofit decide when to get an outside professional involved? Because you know sometimes that may be very important and they don't have the skills, but they may not know that they don't have the skills. You know, that's one of the things that I, you know, I, I do a lot of work in communications and human resources, and they're the two areas of, of organizations that everybody thinks they can do better than the people who actually yeah. do. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't, know why I've chosen, and, yeah, right. I don't know why I've chosen I've chosen this profession that everybody can do better than I can do. But, um, you know, I think you have to determine the risk. So the risk analysis. So if, if this gets out, so did I have an employee um, that had some bad behavior? Is that going to financially devastate us? Is it going to impact our donors? Is it going to ruin our reputation? I mean, that's why you have to figure out what it is and what, um, what mm -hmm. the potential implications are. And then if, you, if it has the potential of, of be, being problematic for either financial resources, potential donors, or reputation, then you really should bring somebody in from the outside. And I assume, I hate to use the dreaded L word, which reflects myself, but I assume sometimes you have to work very closely with the the lawyers for a particular organization. You know, I always laugh. I'm not a lawyer, but I play one on TV because I, you know, really so much of this does have to do with the legal environment, um, and mm -hmm. per particularly if it's employee related, which in my experience, a lot of these kinds of um, mm -hmm. crisis issues are as an employee has conducted some bad behavior. And um, there's a lot of rules that you have to follow with um, making sure that you're not violating somebody's privacy rights um, or that you're not defaming somebody. Yeah, and, 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 and let's talk, now that we know kind of who the team is, let's talk about kind of what you should do and what I'll refer to as, uh, as the ninth grade logic problem, which is, you know, if A then B doesn't really apply because if A, then maybe A, B, C, D, E, F, or X right. may happen, um, which, which you would refer to as scenario planning. So can exactly. you talk a little bit about what that means? Right, you have to identify, you know, on a scale of one, I love a scale of one to 10, and I often ask people, so on a, you know, once you've kind of figured out what the crisis is, to go around the room and ask people on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, being the most serious and one being the least serious, where do you see this issue? engage people's thoughts in the room. You know, you've, you've put together some good advisors around you, um, even if, if it's internal advisors, get their sense and then scenario plan. So here's the issue. And if we do A, here's what the potential outcome could be, B, C. I am a big fan of just brainstorming all sorts yeah. of scenarios. Sure. And then the next step is, I firmly believe there's an opportunity in every crisis. Mm -hmm. And so as you're scenario planning and you have to determine, and this is the hardest thing for people is determine whether or not this issue is going to get become public because sometimes you just don't know. Right. You just don't know if it's going to be public. Right. And, and I want to ask you about the different kind of iterations of what public means a little bit uh, further into the interview. Um, sometimes uh, one of the things that groups may not have an innate sense of is what to share publicly right. and what not to share publicly. Obviously not lying is at the front of every list, right? That's a, that's a no, no, we're not talking about advocating anybody lie, but there's always going to be a decision about what to share and what not to share. Right. How, I know it's different in every situation, but how do people go about thinking through that issue? You know, it's just, it's, it's honestly a basic risk analysis. What is mm. the cost benefit of, um, sharing this information. And I'm a firm believer, um, and as I wrote my article, he who gets out first wins. So if it's something that you really believe might get out in the media, might get to your board before you get a chance, you know, but, but by somebody else, I mean, do you have an irate client or donor who's going to go bypass you as the ED and go straight to your chairman of your board? Yeah. Um, those are those risk analysis that you have to do. And sometimes that's a guessing game. Yeah, it sometimes is. it's a guessing game. And, and, and once, once you inject something into the public sphere, you of course lose control, right? You can guess kind of where it's going, but you don't know, right? So. Well, e exactly. And, you know, there are people who can make things worse than, um, 
than they really are. I mean, you, you, you've seen plenty of, um, you know, I, I hate to use a royal example, but you know, Prince, An Prince Andrew, who tried to do this this interview um, yeah. about Jeff, you know, about a, a friend of his. And um, it blew up and made the situation worse than it already was. Right. And but those are calculated. Sometimes you don't know, but particularly when it comes to a nonprofit, people expect you to be to be um, to to be open and honest and transparent about your organization. And because when they part of the brand, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. You know, yeah. you're, you're you're supposed to be a do-gooder. You're supposed to be for your communities. And if they, you look like you're hiding something that's problematic for your reputation. Right. You mentioned turning a problem into an opportunity. I don't know if you can think of an example of maybe how that could happen, um, you know, or, or where you've seen that happen. Well, gosh, I, every, every issue that comes my way, that's once I go through step one and two is to try to find the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and where you do that is you take a look at your mission and your vision and your value system. And where does this fall into mm -hmm. that value system? So um, let's say that your one of your value systems is integrity. Well, gosh, was it was was what happened in your organization? Like did let, let's assume that maybe somebody in your organization misused some funds okay and you know fundraising and how that money's used is central to non-for-profits right, right? people care yeah. deeply about how that money is being used sure. and so if there's somebody in your organization who is inappropriately used that then you go straight to your board and say here's what happened here's what you know johnny john did and here's what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And the opportunity in that is, is that it came to your attention quickly and you did something about it. So the opportunity yeah. here is we're being transparent. We're being open. Now, what you do next, do you go beyond your board? Yeah. Do you, you know, do you go beyond your top donors? That's a different thing. But where the opportunity in that is to demonstrate Integrity is important to us, and we're going to do something about it. Yeah, that's a really good example. And in that instance, uh, for instance, it, it, while the executive director or the board president might often be the spokesperson in such a situation, in that situation, if they're eloquent and, and well-spoken, maybe putting the CFO or the treasurer out there, you know, to show people that it's being monitored by somebody who has financial background or accounting background or whatever. Right. You're going to do an audit, you know, you're going to do an audit for your organization, getting a third mm -hmm. party in to look at things is always a good idea. But really, right. one of the things, um, it, particularly if it's what I call the self inflicted wound, that is something that happened inside your organization by an employee yeah. or something like that, is that people know that stuff's going to happen, you can't hire perfectly, nobody can. Um, but what do you do about it when when something like that happens? And honestly, that's what the public cares most about. That's what your donors care most about is not the fact that it happened, but how did it happen and what are you going to do about it? Our culture generally is pretty um, uh, forgiving about things that people come forward about. I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, they they. We're, we're a culture that loves comebacks, too. So yeah, we love right. people who can rebound from uh from a mistake from a from tragedy yeah so i'm i'm curious about today's um morass of communication media so we know how many ways information can get spread and can get distorted and in fact we have outlets that will deliberately just dis distort to right. get eyeballs right so right. so or malevolently but usually just to get more eyeballs so so how do you manage the process of keeping tabs on how the situation plays out across all these media, because you've got to know how to deal with TV and with social and with, you know, print. Yes, it still exists. And you know, how do you, how do how do you deal with that very broad environment? Well, that's where you do your scenario planning. And when you're planning, you know, when you get to step four, establish your objectives and your outcomes. Some people think, well, here's what the crisis is. So let's just go do this well what you, you got to step back and say what are we trying to achieve here you know you do that mm -hmm. with your opportunity are we trying to um, minimize this getting out are we trying to use it as a way to demonstrate how we do things right and i believe you have to have those the, that 
very clear objectives of what you're trying to accomplish there and then stay within those key messages. And sometimes depending upon your media outlet, social media, television media, you need to scenario plan on each one of those. Do mm -hmm. I go to one reporter who I trust and get the story out through that reporter or that media outlet? Do I go directly to my social media and my website and put it on there so it demonstrates that I'm being proactive about it, but I'm not necessarily blasting it out to every media outlet and bringing something to their attention that they don't necessarily need or want to know about? Yeah. Um... I don't know if you can generalize, but if you could identify what maybe some of the top uh, or most common mistakes public facing groups make in these situations, can you put them into categories? Well, the, the biggest mistake I see is people um, thinking that it'll go away on its own. And sometimes the hardest part about that is sometimes it does. Yeah. And, and they're so, deluded into thinking it always does. Exactly. And so I worked yeah. with a non-profit a couple of years ago where um, a, the, uh, an employee was accused of mistreating a client, hmm. somebody yes. they served. And it was starting to get around in the community. And Ooh. so this company, this organization, this not-for-profit called me and we followed these steps and did a game plan. And I am just one of those believers that the more you plan, the better the outcome will be, you know, sure. and it's better to plan and have nothing happen than, than not plan and be caught really shorthanded. Yes, exactly. So um, I think that putting a plan together, um, regardless of whether you're going to need it. So that's one thing, underestimating what could happen and then overestimating what could happen. So sure. I worked with a government agency many years ago and the post dispatch got a hold of, a, of an item and they were making a really big deal about it. We had to work with another government, the organization I was supporting had to work with another government agency and that agency was trying to blow the thing up when only one media outlet was interested in it. Mm. They weren't getting calls from the public outraged about it. And it was this battle back and forth. And it ended up being a much bigger story than it should have been because one group overreacted. And you yeah. can overreact. You can raise something to a crisis level that might not have otherwise been a crisis. So the underreact and, you, and the overreact. And, and you, you as, a, as a, a communications professional probably have a more of an innate sense of whether you're seeing a, um, a general or a specific response right. to a problem, right? Because you've seen it a hundred times. So it's like, this one outlet is kind of screwball in this, right? Right. Well, you know, you, you know, some things to ask yourself. Am I getting calls from donors or clients? You know, am, is, am I getting multiple media requests? Mm -hmm. Am I getting threats to make it go out? You know, <laughs> yeah. do I have somebody on the line? You know, you do, you know, I do a lot of work in the criminal justice system and I have an angry victim who's threatening to take it, you know, to the media. And sure. that's going to happen in a lot of different scenarios. Somebody threat with social media and newsrooms, anybody can call and make something a big deal in the media. Yes. Um, I want to um, finish with a couple of questions relating to the time period way before the crisis and then the time period after the crisis. So let's go back to before the beginning. How does an organization make sure kind of from a planning perspective, they're in position to respond um, to crises in general. Should they have an overall crisis policy and crisis communications policy um, that the board and staff have signed off on? How do they know what that should look like? Well, I think every organization should have some kind of a mission of values and goals. Sure. That should be public, okay? And then yep. you, you create a communication plan around those things right there, you know, the mission the of your values and goals. Is part of that is what you Right, saying. right. So what are your communication outcomes? What do you hope to achieve by communicating with your constituents? And, you know, you've, mm -hmm. you've, got, def, you've got your public, you've got your donors, you've got your board, you've got your, um, you, whatever, the clients you serve, whatever communities you serve. And then you put together your top five key messages overall. Not, I mean, this is beyond the crisis, your five key sure. messages. And then you figure out 
what tools are you going to use to constantly get your messages out? And today, organizations have far more power than they ever used to with mm -hmm. social media and websites. So now it used to be that you only had print media and television and radio. And, you know, basically he who owns the media outlet, you know, owns the narrative. And that's no longer the case. So people have far more opportunity to get that information out to their constituents than they ever did before, but everybody needs a communication plan, regardless of whether or not you're in a crisis. And I advocate to put one together before you get to a crisis. And, and is there a crisis component of that plan or, or not? Yes, so there okay. is There's like who needs to be informed, who needs to be involved in the decision making, what resources do we have available to us? Um, and, and like, you know, kind of like a phone tree, but you should know, do you know, do you have your lawyer? Do you have an organizational lawyer? And do they have a background in helping you figure this stuff out? So sure. you should have your team that you can get together quickly to do your brainstorming and follow the, 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 the steps we've outlined. And, 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 you know, one of the reasons we started Nonprofit News is because there are an awful lot of nonprofits. I mean, depending on, on whose word you take, there are somewhere between eight and 13,000 nonprofits in our region. You know, there may not be that many active ones in our region, but there's a lot. And, and probably a, a, a large majority of them are small enough that they don't have dedicated paid um, professionals. Is it safe to assume in a crisis that if a, let's say a media outlet is jumping on your nonprofit, that your ability to react in as large a space and to get to as many people as the media outlet is something you can accomplish? Because sometimes you know, they get frustrated about that. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is, but here's the great thing. Even if something gets on a, a local network news, um, doesn't mean everybody's gonna see it or doesn't mean everybody cares. Mm -hmm. Good and point. so, and you know, one of the things is you have to, I believe in monitoring your network. So part mm -hmm. of the article, you know, get Google alerts about your right. executive director and the name of your organization, maybe even your your board chair. Um, sure. There's another um, a monitoring system called um, Mention out there. And for small organizations, you can get a free version of that. Cool. Google alerts does anything um, sort of in the, in the news online. Um, or when it hits a website, mention does everything. So if people are talking mm. about you on social media, mention oh, nice. will find that for you. Is particularly yeah. So I'm a big fan of monitoring those just so you know what's going on. And you can get ahead of issues even before you, they. You occur. can, and, and I'm also a big fan of utilizing social media um, to help respond to things. So if you've got somebody posting on your Facebook page or posting on your Twitter accusing you of something. Be really thoughtful about how you respond to that. But you've got, I, I'm of the, of the philosophy that you want to hit those things hard and fast. You don't want to be yeah. angry. You want to be, you know, presidential in a way. But you want right. to say, you know, I appreciate your bringing this to our attention, but that's not true. That yeah. didn't happen. Or <laughs> if you would like to call and discuss your thoughts, we'd be open to that. We'd, mm -hmm. would love for you to talk. Please call this number and would be love to love to talk to you about our, your concerns. Sure. And then let's go to after the crisis. And while I'm sure this happens with all Susan Ryan clients, uh, I don't know if it happens with everyone. So how good a job or not good a job generally do organizations do in doing a post-mortem on the crisis on what they did? Well, I can see that nodding no. I suspected that was the answer. Usually people are so darn exhausted by the time it's over. They just say, I'm behind, I got to move on to the next thing. Right. So talk about how dangerous that really is. It really is because, you know, it, particularly if you've never dealt with a crisis before, there's, you know, mistakes are going to happen. And there's, you know, things that maybe you wish you had done and maybe you wished you hadn't done. So uh, right afterwards, even if it's still a little painful, because here's the thing about those people, those folks who get into nonprofits do it for all the right reasons, because they yep. care so deeply. And that's when it ends up hurting the most. Right. But that's the best time to sit around the table and say, what did we do well? What could we have done better? What might we want to do differently next time? Yes, and I assume you don't let your clients off the hook on that, correct? You know, I really don't because I look at every 
like every every issue, there's an opportunity and there's an opportunity to learn too from an internal group. So, you know, I didn't just fall out of bed one morning and learn how to do this. I've got the scars all over me to prove it. You know, I've got the bad decision making, the good decision making. Um, and I, you know, it's essential that you learn this non for profit that I was talking about before. The employee um, was accused of mistreating a client. We put together a whole communication plan. We were ready to go. And we did, if this happens, then we're going to do this. And if that happens, we're going to do that. And we were able to solve the problem that never got out. And mm. I'm a firm believer that, you know, then after all that stuff happened and we did a quick, let's see, you know, here's how things went down. They were able to say, we did this right getting together mm -hmm. a plan, putting this in action. They called a couple of people to clarify a, a story and it was done. And those are really important. And again, you, as much as I'd love you to call me, you don't need a communications professional to solve every issue. That's one of the reasons we put these steps together so mm -hmm. you could follow these steps internally and brainstorm and, and put your, your good thinkers around you. Susan, we are so fortunate to have someone of your expertise and experience to help advise our readers and viewers. And I encourage everyone to visit the article that you penned for us on stlnonprofitnews.org. And if anyone wants to find out more about your firm and services, where's a good place for them to go? Um, actually, I only, you know, speaking of, you know, getting out there, I only have one website, but feel free. If somebody has a quick question that they'd like answered, feel free to email me at Susan. Um, dot c dot ryan at att.net i've got three emails or <laughs> s ryan llc at gmail.com or susan at veracausagroup.com and call email me you know all you have to do is google me my phone number's out there um and i'm happy to answer some quick questions for anybody who is um a subscriber to your publication and and who watches this i care deeply about the community and the good work that so many of you do out there. And I'm delighted to, to help out on, on simple issues like that. Susan, thank you so much for being here for us. And we wish you the best in all of your endeavors. And thank you all for watching uh, this installment of What Do You Know? I'm Larry Levin with STL Nonprofit News. And until next time, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.